Django kende geen nood zo groot als een koe. Had een mismaakte hand. Speelde dus met twee vingers. Ontwikkelde een stijl die hij van niemand overgenomen had. Zijn eigen stijl, onmiddellijk herkenbaar als je hem hoort spelen. A musician with a very different sound and image was turning it into a lead instrument which would enthrall the world. Listen to Django Reinhardt. It is the same melody, but what a difference in interpretation. Born into poverty in 1910, Django started out playing the banjo. An illiterate gypsy, he became the first genius of the jazz guitar. And in partnership with Stefan Grappelli in the quintet of the Hot Club of France, he found international fame. But he was lucky to be playing at all. One night in 1928, Django's caravan caught fire. And though he escaped with his life, his left hand was badly burned. Bedridden for 18 months, he retaught himself to play using just two fingers. John Etheridge, who played with Grappelli later in his career, has analysed Django's style. The finger business is very interesting because I thought he'd be sort of going like this um, or something like that, but he doesn't. It's almost like it moves around like one thing. Like that. So, and, and Stefan Grappelli used to say, well, you know, he had an advantage because, you know, all the time there's that nanosecond of choice about which finger to use. So you're absolutely, once he'd got a handle on it, which of course I, I without practicing, I can't get anywhere near, but once you get a handle on it, he's flying about like really free, you know. So you could say Django Reinhardt style was amazing despite having lost the use of his fingers. Or you could say Django Reinhardt style was amazing because of the loss of his fingers. Django was a gypsy through and through, and relished the freedom his status as an outsider gave him. Django was like a prince and was very, very conceited. The thing about not bothering to turn up for professional engagements and things comes from security, not from insecurity. It comes from, oh, I don't want to go. I can't be bothered, you know. I don't need it, you know. Whereas Stefan would always, oh, he's always there early, you know, ready to play. And, and so they were always falling out. Hello, where is he? He's never there. Listen. He was a genius, but so what? He was never there! <laughs> <laughs> For many guitarists who came later, Django seemed to embody the spirit of the instrument. He was my god. And one day I got a phone call and they said, would you come in back, Django Reinhardt, with Stefan Grappelli? I said, would I? And so I went down there and I can't speak French and Django couldn't speak English. And he, we were sitting like we are on a settee, and he got a guitar and he went, brum, diddly, 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 diddly. and I said, <laughs> encore, encore. He went, brum, diddly, 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 diddly. I've never heard anything. I said, encore, encore, s'il vous plaît, encore. <laughs> and he just got the guitar and sort of tossed it on a settee and, and moved over. And I thought, I'm actually playing with Django Reinhardt. And it was a most exciting day because he was the best guitarist ever. Mm -hmm. 